was the most significant birth in the history of the world. And it was testified to by the first-hand accounts of those who witnessed it. Join us as we investigate the perspectives of the witnesses to the birth of Jesus. I'm coming. So, sorry to make you wait. Some of you have been waiting for some special occasion to come. Kids, some gifts, a big holiday coming. Well, my name's Simeon, and I waited my whole life for the coming of the Messiah. You guys mind if I have a seat? Ooh, it's a ways down there. Anyway, where was I? So, I'm a devout Jewish man. Lived my whole life waiting for and anxious to see the coming of the Messiah, the Anointed One, the Christ. And the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I would not see death until I, I saw the coming of the Messiah. So I was up at the temple when Mary and Joseph came. You see, after Jesus' birth on the eighth day, Jesus was circumcised, and 33 days later, according to the laws recorded in Leviticus, there were sacrifices and rites of purification that needed to be done, and so Mary and Joseph had made this six-mile journey to Jerusalem for the sacrifices that they needed to make to be made. They were a poor couple, so they could not provide a lamb. But as the law says, in those cases, you can either give a pair of doves or two pigeons, and they did. They did all that was required in the law for them to do. I, I, I tell you that, So you'll understand that this Christ, the Messiah, he was truly the Jewish Messiah. Christianity is not a revolt or rebellion against Judaism. It is the fulfillment of the Old Testament teaching. Well, just a second. So some have asked how old I am. If you've read the writing of Luke, you know he tells you how old the prophetess Anna was. She was there too, prophesying. Uh, Or at least gives you a good indication of her age. Uh, All the scripture says about me is that I received a word from the Holy Spirit that I wouldn't see death until I saw the coming of the Messiah. Well, when I saw Mary and Joseph come in to the temple, I... I took the baby Jesus in my arms and I said, Lord, now I can depart in peace because I have seen your salvation. You're working in the presence of all people. This, This child... You'll be a light and a revelation to the Gentiles and a glory, a glory to Israel. 
And when I looked up, I, I saw Mary and Joseph pondering what I was saying. So I looked right at Mary, and I, and I said to Mary, this child is appointed for the rising and the fall of many in Israel. A sign that will be opposed. And then looking right at her, I said, and your own soul will be pierced. So the hearts of many may be revealed. You, you see, this Jesus, this Messiah, He had come to make us right with God. He had come to give us hope. Hope of a world. A peace. A coming kingdom. But the price that would be paid would be heavy. He would be crucified. A horrible, horrible way to die. And Mary would see that. Oh, the pain that must have been. But see, Jesus, death could not hold him. And he would rise again, ascend into heaven. And one day he will return. And every knee will bow. And every tongue confess. The rise and the fall of many. What do you do with this Jesus? How many folks here open their Christmas presents on Christmas Eve? A few of you. How many it's one Christmas present on Christmas Eve? That, you're my people. That's my group. Yeah? So, and, and how many of you, when you're opening Christmas presents, if you're a parent here, you always forget something? Does it happen to you? Yesterday, I, I was wearing at the memorial service a tie, and I may be able to wear it again tonight, that was given to me by my mother, but I didn't know about it until after she passed away and we were going through stuff. And I know there's some of you here, right? You, you have that gift that you forget about, and after all the gifts are unwrapped, you go, Wait, there's something else, and you run and try to look for it. Anybody else there? Well, I love, I love Christmas, and I love the anticipation and the waiting. And as I did the re reflection on Simeon, I thought about waiting your whole lifetime for something. I'm not very good at waiting. Are you guys? Not at all, right? <laughs> yeah, parents are, are like, kids sleep in. Kids are like, we're going to be up, right? I can remember, I can remember being with my brother and sister on Christmas Eve and not sleeping hardly at all, just anticipating when will, when will that moment come that we can actually see what we got for um, Christmas. And as I was reflecting on Simeon, I thought about some things are worth waiting for. True? And the present that we have to open uh, in Christ is greater than anything we can place under a tree. I uh, want to go ahead and have Bibles with you, you can look at Luke chapter 2. I'll show you where we get this section of Scripture for the drama today. Luke chapter 2, 21, and it says, At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem, that's about six miles, a little under six miles, to present him to the Lord, as is written in the law of the Lord. Every male who opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord 
and to offer sacrifices according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. If you want to see where that is in the Old Testament law, that would be in Leviticus chapter 12, and you will see there that those are the gifts if you don't have enough money for a lamb. Now, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation, not the constellation, we'll talk about constellations next week when we talk about the Magi, but the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all people a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. So first of all, that, that's significant everything we've read. I'll keep it brief. We've got Christmas Eve here. But why is Luke wanting us to know this through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? A couple things, I believe. First, he wants you to know that Mary and Joseph were Jewish and devout Jewish folks, as was Simeon. Christianity is not a rebellion against Judaism. Do we get that? But a fulfillment. And that is what Luke wants to point out. Mary and Joseph carried out all of the regulations and rules. And he wants you to show that the message that Jesus has is for all people. It will be a light unto the Gentile nations also, which is a good thing because many of us here are not um, Jewish by descent. And this was, the, by the way, the plan from the very beginning that God would bless every nation and every people. So Jesus is for all people. And then if uh, we continue to read, he says, And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed. A sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that, th so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Thinking yesterday after I finished the message for the memorial service, I was thinking I said something in the memorial service that is controversial to some. Because I said to get right with God and to be guaranteed a place in heaven, you must receive Christ. If you said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no one comes to the Father but through me. We didn't, we didn't make that up. That's what Jesus said, right? So still today, Jesus brings controversy, does he not? People try to recreate him in their own image, but he brings he brings controversy. Because people want to think they need a great teacher. They don't want to think they need someone to save them from their sins a lot of times. We don't want to admit that we are as evil as we are apart from the grace of God. True? And we all need a redeemer. We all need a savior to set us free. That's, that's the message. And I think uh, if you continue to read Luke, it's, it's a great passage. You can see the prophecy of Anna there also. And I just think it's amazing the timing of God. In doing these dramas, it's just been amazing how many, we're talking hundreds of years passing be between prophecies and events. And in this case, this, the whole, this whole lifespan, you know what I mean? Waiting and waiting and waiting. I wanted to just read a, read a prayer that's in this book that we've been giving away, Seeing and Savoring Jesus Christ. It struck me as I thought about all, all of the suffering in the world, 
We don't need a band-aid. We need something much greater than that to fix the problems in the world and the problems in our own soul. Amen? Here's the prayer. Oh Lord, the suffering in the world is so widespread and the pain is so great. Have mercy and awaken the souls of suffering millions to the hope of some relief now and unsurpassed joy in ages to come. Send your church, O God, with relief and with the word of the gospel that there is forgiveness of sins through faith in Christ and that no suffering here is worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed to the children of God. Protect your church, Father, from callous thoughts about calamities that leave millions destitute and protect her also from cowering to critics like Job's wife who cannot trust the wisdom and power and goodness of Christ in the midst of misery. Oh, help our unbelief. Incline our hearts to your word and to its assurance that you work all things according to the counsel of your will and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted and that you are doing good and acting wisely in ways that we cannot now even dream. Keep us in peace, O Lord, and forbid that we murmur and complain. Grant us humble and submissive hearts under your mighty hand. Teach us to wait and watch for your final and holy purposes in all things. Grant that we should rejoice in hope even when present circumstances bring us tears. Open the eyes of our hearts to see the greatness of our inheritance in Christ and send us with tender hands to touch with mercy the miseries of the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. You know, when it comes to prayer life, I I think... I think of prayer as communicating with God. True? And being in discussion with God. I think of it as like a relationship. Now, it would be odd if the only way I communicated to my wife was through Hallmark cards, right? Somebody else's words. But it isn't wrong that sometimes I'll pick out a card that says exactly what I'm trying to say to her. I say that about prayers. There's nothing wrong with reading other people's written prayers that help us find the words to say what our hearts long to say. That's what I found in that prayer. Now, I know some of our kids are just so anxious for for Christmas to come. I hope the most anxious part is knowing how great our God is. And it's good because we can delight in these gifts under the tree because it's a reminder that our Heavenly Father has given us the greatest gift of all, salvation through Jesus. And I want to say that Jesus continues to make a difference in lives. And I want you to know that there is a special project going on, because I'm right now being recorded, I won't give all the details. A very war-torn land has significant concerns in that area. World concern, let us know here about that as a church and out of... um, funds that we have, we were able to send $20,000 to help the people there because of the generosity. Christ is still making a difference in lives. Amen? And we will continue to seek ways to show the the love of Jesus to the nations. I was convicted this week as I thought about what it cost Mary and even more what it cost Jesus. Right? Right? Mary was just a human like us who who was used by God, right? Jesus was the Messiah. There's there's a difference there. And what it must have been like to see the joy and the pain, but to know in the end the joy is always greater because Christ is victorious. Amen? So we will uh, now uh, sing together. Oh, I wanted to also point out to you, as you fill out your connection cards, in your outlines, I provided you with some questions so you could read the Christmas story with your family. We believe that what you do with your family really matters, right? And also there's, through Right Now Media, there's a little presentation there about um, why we celebrate Christmas and the different things about Christmas. I encourage you to watch that and to your internet searches and check all the facts and in, enjoy that. So uh, we'd love people to spend time with their families. Let's pray. Dear Lord, 
Thank you for meeting us wherever we are with hope. And I pray that you'll be with each one here. And I pray that you use each life here and each gift given for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people said, Amen. This sermon is from Edgewood Baptist Church. You can find more information about us online at ebc-edmonds.org. Thanks for listening.